Um, they make an they make a comment about these particular books, which I think is quite interesting. In that they said the art and the text, or sorry, uh, yeah, the the art is giving context to the text more than ever, or more than any other D and D book ever has with these, and and based on the way Jeremy and, and Chris Perkins were talking about it. They were saying that they were basically they had the piece of art and then were designing ideas based on the piece of art they had to like right next to them. You know, like this spell does this and then they look at the art and go, oh, this is in the in the picture for the art. So I'm going to add this to the spell that I think is really cool and I think is going to get us some really um, interesting, evocative ideas because art and writing, there's this thing you can do where the two can influence each other. You know, like it could go both ways, right? A writer could write something really interesting and then an artist can pull an art piece out of that. But you can also have a situation where an artist draws something with absolutely zero context and then the writer can add all this fun context to it like just by looking at the piece of art. So it sounds like they're kind of doing that where it's like they're getting pieces of art and then pulling stuff out of it. And that's a unique thing that I don't. As far as I can tell by what they're saying, they've never done that before. And maybe D&D has never done that ever. Question mark. Unsure. But that's what they made it sound like. Uh, I think that's really cool. I think that'll get us some fun stuff. I'm hoping maybe I'm being too wishful, but I'm hoping, you know what I mean? No, I mean, I think you hit it in the... It, it could be amazing, yeah. right? Like, it could yield some amazing results. It might not, but if things pan out the way they should, yeah, it's going to be great. And I, I've said this before. I've said this a lot. Um, Just in general, one of the things that irks the shit out of me about TTRPGs, and D&D especially, is that there are so many really cool ideas that you want to see visualized, but then they don't actually, you know where this is the worst unironically it's the Warhammer shit. It, everything to do with Warhammer 40 K. Yeah. Amazing ideas with no visual representation for it. And you're like, what? Yeah. What the fuck is going on right now? Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, <laughs> you, you know do, what I mean? You do have to take the L a little bit and understand that a lot of it is budget, you know, like, no, absolutely. No, I get it. I do. But so there's, th that's the thing I'm kind of trying to say, right. Is like now, that I mean, no, now yeah, that we have for that fucking, budget <laughs> for, for for James Workshop, yeah, no, well, uh, yeah, they're too busy suing literally everybody and everything, right? Um, over stuff that they stole. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with, with uh, with wizards, it's it's great to finally see definitively what the hell Sacred Flame looks like. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get that one. Finally, that'd be fun. I, I finally we finally get to see what chill touch looks like. Yeah, I mean, they so, yeah, they literally said in the video, um, we're getting more spell illustrations depicting the magic in the game, which I definitely, as I just said, is a thing I think a lot of people like. Uh, and they specifically call out some of the spells and this I like a lot. Some of the art, some of the spell art is the spell being cast by the spells creator. So they specifically reference Melk, Tasha, and Bigby. Uh, so Melk's my new meteors. Tasha has like fucking six spells named after her at this point. Uh, Bigby's hand. Morning Kanan. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they called out Morning Kanan having art, but they they mentioned that those three I remember specifically. Um, and oh, like, and um, um, oh god, uh, oh Melf also with the acid arrow. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I just said. I said Melk. Oh, Melf. Sorry, Melf. I meant to say, yeah, Melf. Yeah. Uh, yes, they specifically say there's a piece of art of Melf casting uh, Melf's acid arrow, which I think is very funny. Um, side note, do you know Do you know who Melf the character is? Yeah, that's uh, Gary's son. It was Gary's you... son, and he was an elf wizard, and his name is Melf because he's a male elf. <laughs> that's, yeah, nice. But yes, that was Gary's what? son's character. Um, well, it's so good yeah. to know that the that the stupid names thing has gone back since, since the, the dawn of D and D. Yeah, literally. Yes. Yeah. As long as there's D and D, I mean, there's been uh, Merrill Mitcher <laughs> and, and, and uh, Matingo Santoya. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, my guy, fucking the mo- one of the most famous D&D villains ever is Vecna, and his name is just an anagram of Vance because of, you know, Vancean casting. So, yeah. I didn't, I didn't fucking know that. You didn't know that's where Vecna's name came from? No, I hate that so yeah, much. That's why he's named Vecna. God they took the name. It. They took Vecna is such a cool name. It, it did work out. It worked <laughs> out. Yeah, Vecna worked out as a good name. But yeah, literally they took Vance... Uh, I, I can't remember Vance's first name, but the author who did who created Vancey and magic and they moved it. They moved the letters around and got Vecta. Literally. Yep. So, yes, uh, I just, D- just I hate I hate it. I hate that so much. <laughs> D&D has a long history of of uh, goofy ass. Move the letters around and get a new name. Um. I can't I remember. God, what's his first name? Is it Jack Vance? That sounds right, right? Jack Vance? It's Jack Vance. I was right. Okay, anyway. Um So yeah, Mel Mel, we're getting specific R of things like Mouse Acid Arrow, which I think is very fun. Uh, I hope we also get Mel's Minute Meteors because the there's also a goofy story behind that spell. Because Gary's son wanted to cast Fireball, but didn't want to blow up all his teammates, so he made him melt minute meteors. So he could throw little fireballs. I I think we've talked about this, but in my head, uh, melt minute meteors is just a uh, crystal mass or soul mass from Dark Souls, where you just do the, the hand wavy over the head and the little thing is just yeah. hover above you and then sentry gun at shit. I imagine it like that, except they're like little flaming rocks. As opposed to like yeah, magical yeah. orbs. Um, yeah, so and this is where we get the comment of Jocker. So I literally wrote the quote down. This is really the first of the uh, this is really the first of the players handbooks that have been done. That has been done where the art has been developed so closely with the text. Uh, the art usually comes it, quote unquote there. Um, and then I said, yeah, the, the art usually comes later, but not this time. The two were being done in tandem. Uh, so he calls it out very specifically, which the fact that he's calling it out to me makes me think, OK, he must think that they're doing something really cool with that. Otherwise, he wouldn't mention it, you know? Yeah, that's a huge thing to just if you're if, drop. Yeah, like if you're that. saying yeah. it, it must be relevant. You must feel like it's co- it's a cool idea because you're bringing it up because if you were doing something like that, but it wasn't that interesting, you just wouldn't mention it. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they then go on and they mention all three of these books, all three of them.